How good will the Baltimore Ravens offense be this upcoming NFL season? We got to talk about it. I want to give a special shout out to the sponsor of this video, Manscaped. So Manscaped recently just launched their Lawnmower 4.0. And listen, if you are a guy who does a lot of shaving underneath, the Lawnmower 4.0 is the perfect tool for you because listen, my first time shaving a couple of months ago went terrible. I had a bunch of scrapes, I had a bunch of bruises, and I also had patches because I didn't even finish the job. So when Manscaped sent me the Lawnmower 4.0, I used it and I was a little bit scared, okay? Because I was like, you know, I ain't trying to give myself patches and give myself injuries like I did last time, my first time shaving. But when I used the Lawnmower 4.0, let me tell you guys something. It was a easy process I had no scrapes no bruises it was no pain listen if you're a guy who does a lot of shaving underneath make sure that you guys go ahead and cop the lawnmower 4.0 using my promo code JT for 20% off plus free shipping off your manscape purchase once again make sure that you guys use promo code JT for 20% off your purchase plus free shipping your balls will thank you so the Baltimore Ravens offense last year in 2020 kind of struggled a little bit there were questions about the play calling the offense just really couldn't really get in sync couldn't really get in rhythm and greg roman received a lot of scrutiny a lot of criticism and a lot of ravens fans were calling for his job but the ravens offense picked up during the month of november they got the run game going they ended up finishing last year with the best rushing attack in the nfl being number one in rushing yards per game allowed but now the big question for Baltimore Ravens fans that they have going into next year, well, this season, is going to be, can Greg Roman improve the passing game? Now, that's always been the biggest knock on Greg Roman is that Greg Roman is one of the best offensive-minded coaches when it comes to the run game. He has innovative run schemes. Like, the way Greg Roman is able to get the most out of the run game is really impressive. But now he has to be able to get the passing game going. Now, there's really no more excuses for Greg Roman when it comes to improving the passing game because the biggest concern for Baltimore is that they didn't really have a lot of talent at wide receiver like you have Marquise Brown but like I've said before and I'm saying it again Marquise Brown isn't a true number one wide receiver he's not a Batman he's a great Robin when you have a great number one wide receiver lined up on the opposite side of Marquise Brown that's where Marquise Brown strives but last year Marquise Brown had to be that number one wide receiver for Baltimore and he kind of struggled he had a lot of drops he had inconsistent games like Marquise Brown really struggled last year so Baltimore went out you get Rashad Bateman in the first round, who I think is a great fit for Baltimore's offense. Like, Rashad Bateman plays way bigger than what he's listed as on paper. Like, on the field, he plays like he's 6'4", 230 pounds. And what Baltimore has been looking for, they've been looking for that big physical wide receiver who can win those big 50-50 ball matchups downfield. They also looking for a great red zone there, and that's what you get out of rookie wide receiver Rashard Bateman. You also got Tylen Wallace in the later rounds. I thought Tylen Wallace would have went in the second round. He ends up falling to Baltimore in the mid part of the draft. So you essentially get two wide receivers who have wide receiver one upside. Then you have Marquise Brown, who is a really good number two option. So for Baltimore. You bring in Sammy Watkins from free agency, which I think is a really underrated signing. I think Sammy Watkins still has way more left in the tank. And when he was playing for Kansas City, he was pretty solid. You know, he was pretty much like their third best wide receiver on the roster. But every once in a while, he would show glimpses of, you know, what he could be, what his potential was when he was initially drafted out of Clemson a couple of years ago. He's normally... You know, a lot of people make a lot of jokes. They say, you know, Sammy Watkins has like a good 150-yard performance. Then he dips. So for Baltimore, you're getting a, a veteran and Sammy Watkins, who I think is what they need for that young receiving room that they have right now. Like, you need a veteran. You need a guy who can come in, give some of the younger wide receivers on the roster some advice. And that's why I really like Sammy Watkins a lot. Like, I think he's a great veteran presence for what you need in a young wide receiving group. Then... You have tight end 
who missed a couple of games last year due to injuries. Mark Andrews, he had 58 receptions, 701 receiving yards, and seven touchdowns. So obviously, Mark Andrews has been the primary wide receiver in the Ravens passing attack over the last two years. Now, you're not going to be asking him to do that anymore. You're not going to be asking him to carry the load of the passing game because now you have guys like Rashard Bateman and Tylen Wallace who should develop to the point that, you know, Mark Andrews isn't Lamar Jackson's go-to guy or first read anymore because pretty much it's been Mark Andrews and then everybody else. So when Mark Andrews was open and Lamar Jackson was forced to have to throw to the other wide receivers, that's where this passing attack kind of struggled at. So... Greg Roman has no excuses for why this passing game should not improve. Like, this passing game was dead last in the NFL last year. And I know Lamar Jackson had to miss a couple of games due to COVID-19 and whatnot. But obviously, he needed more talent around him at the wide receiver position. Now... The offensive line wasn't concerned until they were able to get it improved. They got rid of right tackle Orlando Brown. They traded him to the Kansas City Chiefs. So now the question is going to be who's going to end up replacing him. Will they end up signing former Steelers right tackle Alejandro Villanueva, which he's pretty good when it comes to the run game. Now, when it comes to pass protection, he got beat up last year. And that's coming from a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. And now I'm not hating. I'm not being biased. I'm just giving the God honest truth. Alejandro Villanova really got his butt kicked when it came to pass protection last year. But he's really good in the run game. He's one of the better run blocking right tackles that we have in the NFL. Then you have Kevin Zeitler at right guard. The center position is to be decided. Don't really know who's going to end up starting at center for Baltimore this year. Then left guard, you have Bradley Bowles, man. You have Ronnie Stanley at left tackle. So the offensive line is still really good. You know, don't really know who's going to be starting at center this year. But off the line overall as a whole should still be really good. Now the run game, I'm really, really hyped for J.K. Dobbins. I'm going to draft him and my one of my fantasy leagues. I already have him in one of my dynasty leagues. Like, J.K. Dobbins had 134 carries, 805 rushing yards, 6 um yard was averaging like six yards per carry and like nine touchdowns like jk dobbins was a monster now imagine how much damage he's going to do this year in 2021 if he's getting like a full rb1 workload getting like 200 carries 250 carries a season imagine if he's getting like 20 25 carries a game like this dude is going to be a monster this year i think he's going to be a breakout player for baltimore and don't be surprised if you see jk dobbins in the pro bowl at the end end of the 2021 regular season will end up being a Pro Bowl player at the end of the um 2021 because that's how good J.K. Dobbins is like J.K. Dobbins has great contact balance you're rarely going to see him go down off you know one tackle he's normally really good after you know contact like J.K. Dobbins I'm trying to tell you guys he is going to be a breakout player. If you're a guy who's in the fantasy football and you're looking for some RBs who you need to draft early, I think J.K. Dobbins is definitely a guy who you need to try to make sure that you get within the first two rounds in your fantasy football drafts because J.K. Dobbins is going to put up some big numbers in Baltimore's offense this year. So then you got Lamar Jackson. So Lamar Jackson is going to get paid. He's going to end up becoming the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. I strongly believe it. A lot of people were saying that Lamar Jackson was going to have a down year compared to his MVP season back in 2019, which was understandable. Now, I didn't think Lamar Jackson was going to have a down year. As a matter of fact, he didn't really have a down year. Like, yeah, he may not have had, you know, the best numbers when it came to, you know, passing yards, but when it came to touchdowns, he had 26. I feel like if he would never miss the couple of games that he missed with COVID, he probably would have had like 30 touchdowns. So when you look at Lamar Jackson, we know that this dude is pretty much hard to stop when he decides to tuck the football and run with it. Once again, he had a 1,000 yards on the ground. He also had seven rushing touchdowns. Lamar Jackson is improving year after year. Last year, a lot of people were saying that Lamar Jackson reached his ceiling. And I was telling people, I said, listen, Lamar Jackson still has a lot of room for improvement. Like, Lamar Jackson still hasn't even capped his potential yet. Like, I still feel like Lamar Jackson is going to end up becoming a quarterback who is not only a third 
threat running the football, but he's also going to be a good quarterback when it comes to throwing the football as well. We still continue to see Lamar Jackson's development as a passer improved. I feel like he was a better thrower of the football last year in 2020 than what he was his MVP year. His MVP year, he led the NFL in like touchdown passes. Like Lamar Jackson, we still have not seen Lamar Jackson hit his potential. And that's just downright scary, especially coming from a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. So I know a lot of people criticize Lamar Jackson and his playoff struggles. Like he had a really nice game against Tennessee, struggled against Buffalo. But now with the loaded wide receiver position that Baltimore has, bringing in guys like Sammy Watkins, Tylen Wallace, and Rashard Bateman in the first round, like there's no reason why Lamar Jackson should have you know no more problems when it comes to lack of talent when it comes to wide receiver group so Baltimore's offense I'm expecting this offense to still be really good I don't think the passing game is going to improve as much as Baltimore Ravens fans are hoping it will but I do feel like Greg Roman last year probably was trying to make some tweaks to the passing game but with COVID-19 complicating things everything pretty much being virtually on Zoom meetings and things like that I think that kind of hindered what Greg Roman wanted to do in the passing game so now with the you know somewhat of a normal offseason Greg Roman should be able to make some tweaks and enhance this passing game and I think Baltimore's passing game should go from last to pretty much you know 19th the 20th in the NFL is what I'm expecting you know not great but way better than what Baltimore did last season when it came to the passing game so let me know how you guys feel about the Baltimore Ravens offense going into this year's 2021 NFL season I feel like this will be a top three rushing attack but I also feel like this pass game is going to take some steps in the right direction now like I said this this past game, I'm not expecting it to go from last in the NFL to, you know, top five or top ten. But I do think it should make some tremendous strides. It should go from last to, like, you know, 20th or 19th, you know. So I think that is some pretty good improvement, especially with the improvements that they made at the wide receiver position. So make sure that you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel for more NFL videos and content. And thanks for watching.